Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. My name is Jenny and this is Arnold the Praying Penguin and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So I want to take you guys with me as I plan, prepare, write and deliver a sermon. So today is the 3rd of September and I am preaching on Sunday the 4th of October so I have about a month to prepare and write this sermon and I want to take you guys through the process, show you what I do and see where we get up to. So the first thing we need to do is look at the rota and here we'll find out when we're preaching, where we're preaching because there are three churches in this parish as well as our online services at the moment due to Covid and most importantly what the readings are, what are we going to be preaching about. So I've got the rota up here and it tells me that I'm going to be preaching on Sunday the 4th of October at both one of our churches locally and for our online service as well. So the two Bible passages that I'll be preaching about for this service are 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 15 and Deuteronomy 24 verses 19 to 22. So what I do in these very early stages of starting to think about what I might be preaching about, one of the first things I need to do after I've looked at this rotor is to read those passages. So I'll just pull them up on Bible Gateway on the computer or in my physical Bible and just have a read through and see what comes to mind to start with, what messages are jumping straight off the page from the very first read. And then I'll take some time over the next couple of days to just let this settle in my mind, to have a think about what it is that God is saying to me through these passages before I dig a bit deeper into them. So I'll spend some time in prayer, asking God to put on my heart whatever it is he wants me to be preaching about. So it's now the 11th of September and we're going to move on to step two of how I write a sermon. So this second step is where I dig more into the Bible passage. I spend more time reading through it, studying it, seeing what it says and what I can pull out of it. And to do this I use Lectio Divina. So this is a way of approaching reading a Bible passage where you read through it multiple times and see what words or sentences or phrases stand out to you and you spend time exploring those and praying over those. So I'm going to do that today. So I have my reading printed out quite nice and large so I can write on it. I've got a pen and I've got some nice highlighters that I can use to highlight it and highlight the things that are standing out and then see what is standing out to me through this. The third step in this process is to get out the commentaries and have a read of what other people have said and have written about this passage. So the only commentary I have at the moment on 2 Corinthians, which is the passage we're focusing on, is this one, which is the New Interpreter's Bible Commentary, and it is hefty. But I also have the NIV application commentary in ebook form, so I'm going to use that on the computer as well to have a look at this. So I'm going to read through these commentaries, see what they say, see what they add to what I've already studied, and then I will add those notes to the version of the reading that I've already highlighted and annotated and see what we come up with. So step four in my process of how I write a sermon is the planning stage. And there's a couple of different methods that I use to do this. But first, it's really important that we start with prayer. We want this sermon to be inspired by God and to be led by God and for God to get his message across through us. So we just pray and ask that he'll lead us in our planning. He'll show us what he wants us to talk about. So when I'm planning, I do two things in particular. The first is that I want to have one main message, one thing that people will take away from the sermon and will remember, and that everything in my sermon will come back to. 
And the second thing is a five question process that I learned at a talk from Kathy Madavan when she was talking about good public speaking. So when you're planning a sermon or any kind of public talking, you ask yourself these five questions that will help to guide you in your planning. The first is what do I want people to know? What information do I want to get across from me to them? Second question is why do I want them to know this? I think it's really useful, especially in sermon writing, to understand why we want to get this information to them, why we think this information is important for them to understand. The third question is what do I want them to do? What's the call to action? What do I want them to take away from this that they're actually going to implement into their own lives? Question four is why do I want them to do this? Again, this is the backing up of actually why is this an important thing for them to do? And the fifth question is how am I going to persuade them to do that? What information do I need to share with them to convince them that this is something they should do? And then when I've got those five questions clear in my brain and know what my one message of my sermon is going to be, then I plan out my sermon in bullet points just to get an idea of what order things are going to happen in. So step five in this process is the practicalities, the fun stuff. Once I've got an idea of what I want to get across, what message I want people to hear, and roughly what I want to say in my sermon, then I need to think about how am I actually gonna get this message across. So I need to think about how I get this message across in a way that lots of different ages will understand. Not everybody likes just a straight talking half hour sermon. That doesn't work for everyone. Some people like stories, some people like seeing visual things up on a screen, some people like to be doing things. So at this point in the process, I start to think about what stories do I have from my own life that I could integrate into the sermon that would help to illustrate my point. What illustrations could I use? What props could I use? How am I going to incorporate different learning styles into the sermon? So step six of the process is to actually start writing this sermon. And this is probably the step that I struggle with the most because it's taking those ideas that I've had in planning and actually getting them onto paper, well, onto laptop. Trying to turn my ideas into an actual sermon. So my biggest tips for this section is to firstly start with prayer. There's so many times where I've struggled for hours trying to work out what I need to write, work out what I'm gonna say, and I've just taken some time to spend time in prayer and to ask God what he wants me to write. And then after that, everything's just kind of fallen into place and the sermons come together really well after I've prayed. So always remember to start with prayer. Apart from that, my top tips are just to start writing and let it flow. See what comes out. You don't necessarily even need to start at the beginning. Start with the bit that you're most confident about, that you understand the most, that you know most what you want to say and let the other sections flow from that bit. So once I finally got the first draft of my sermon written out, the seventh step of my process is the editing. So here I normally take some time to read the sermon, to practice delivering the sermon to someone else. So in my case, I practice it in front of my husband, I deliver it as if I'm delivering it to him, and then see what his thoughts on it are, see what things he thinks I need to embellish a little bit more, talk about a little bit more, if there's any problems, if it's a bit boring, anything like that. I just get some feedback from him and see what I can do to improve it. This is also the point where I make sure I know everything that's going on from the service leader, so I know what opening activity they're doing before my sermon. And for example, with this service, because there's an online service, I needed to know what we were doing in terms of harvest gifts. And just little things like that to make sure I don't say anything slightly out of place. 
and to make sure that my sermon fits in with the rest of the service. So I now just have a few edits that I need to make, a couple of bits in the sermon I want to explain a little bit more, go into a bit more detail, I've got a story that I want to add in that I've been thinking about, I'm trying to decide which story I should use, so I need to write that up, and then I think we're nearly done. So the eighth step in the process is the filming of the sermon. So this isn't a normal thing for me, we don't usually film our sermons in this parish, but because of Covid, obviously we are, we have an online service and an in-person service at the moment. So I've got all my camera and stuff set up with quite like a plain background so it's not too distracting, all nice and tidy, all of that kind of stuff. I've printed off my sermon because I do write it out word for word and I don't want to read from like a tablet or a computer because people will see the glare and see the reflection of the screen in my glasses which is just a bit distracting and annoying. So let's go! Good morning! How do you say good morning in a normal person voice? Does it look okay if I hold it like this? Is it okay? Yeah. Okay, give me a warning about that one. <laughs> Good morning. If you don't know me, my name is Jenny and I'm one of the occasional preachers here in the parish. So I've just finished recording the sermon. It's still quite weird kind of recording a sermon. It's very different to delivering it in person. I've got my whole thing printed out because that's how I write it and I cannot memorise two pages of A4. I just can't, do not have that good a memory. So, but then you've got to kind of balance looking at the paper, looking up at the camera, making sure you're kind of making eye contact even though there's nobody there, but there kind of is. Um, so it's all just very weird and you don't want to make too many kind of stops, which normally when I'm filming a normal video, I can just stop as many times as I like, repeat it, because I'm just going to edit it. But I don't want to spend ages editing this because someone else has got to put it together into the service as a whole. I want it to be quite like nice and simple and a bit smoother, less jumpy and all that kind of stuff. But it's quite good practice actually just delivering it. Normally I like to practice delivering it a couple of times before I preach it in person. So actually this is kind of like a good way of doing that really. So step nine of the process is of course the actual delivery of the sermon. So because we have both online and in-person services at this morning, I recorded the sermon for the online service a few days ago and then I preached in person this morning. It was definitely quite different to normal with all of the Covid measures and kind of less people there and people wearing masks and all of that, but I think it went quite well. I don't really have much footage of it um, because I was just in church, I was there by myself so I didn't have anyone else to film with me and it was chucking it down on the way there so I couldn't really film anything. But I thought I'd just share a couple of my top tips for preaching in person that I've learned over the few years that I've been doing preaching now. So my first one is to go slow. Even if it sounds a good speed in your head and as you're speaking, by the time it reaches the people that are listening to you, you really wanna make your preaching as clear and as listen toable as possible for all the people that are there. And actually, I like to liken this to what I was taught in my music lessons when I was learning clarinet. And when I was playing music, I was always taught that I should do all like the volume changes and the markings so extreme that it kind of sounds silly to me. Because if it sounds silly to me, it will sound about right for the people that are listening. So I think the same is for when you're preaching a sermon. I gotta do it so that the pauses are just long enough that it sounds a bit too long to me and they'll be about right for the people that are listening. I need to make sure that I'm going slow enough that it almost sounds a bit silly to me but it's actually the right pace for everyone else that's there because what I'm hearing me talk is not necessarily exactly the same as what they're hearing sat in the pews. And my second tip is to make sure you're making eye contact with people all across the church. So even though I might be reading word for word what's on my piece of paper, I'm still making sure that I'm looking up and looking at different people around the church and making eye contact with them to make sure everyone feels included in the sermon. 
And I think this comes from making sure that you know your sermon quite well, practice it a few times, make sure you know where you are. Um, sometimes I like to highlight bits or put bits in bold so I know where to look back to on the page, or just follow it with my finger so I know exactly where I am all the way through and can jump back easily when I look back down at my piece of paper. But yeah, I think it went quite well, and if you haven't already seen, I did put the filmed version of my sermon up on my channel, so I'll link that down in the description below and you can check that out. So it's now a couple of days later and I'm back for the final instalment of this video. It's a step number 10 of the process of how I write and deliver a sermon, and that step is the debrief. So after I've written and delivered my sermon, I think it's really important to do a bit of a debrief. Actually look at what feedback did I get, how do I think it went, and all of that and just kind of evaluate it and see what I could do better for next time. Because I always want to be improving this, this is something I want to develop and get better at over time. So I think for this one I got a lot less feedback than I normally would because there were less people in church because of Covid and we also weren't encouraging people to like hang around and chat afterwards which is normally when they would like tell me how they found the sermon or if there's anything that I could improve on. But I did get a little bit of feedback both from just the written out version of the sermon which I sent on to get checked before I preached and from the service leader who was there as well. And generally the feedback was all quite positive. Personally I think I definitely could have added a bit more kind of interaction and creative elements to it to make it a bit more fun and engaging for different kind of learning styles. It was very like just talk at you. There definitely could have been more interesting stuff in there and that's always something that I'm kind of working on and trying to get better and better at. But there we go, those are the 10 steps that I use to plan, write and deliver my sermons. I hope this video has been interesting and helpful, maybe given you some inspiration if preaching is something perhaps that you feel you have a gifting in and would like to try. Do let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see any more videos a bit like this. Me and Arnold make videos every Saturday all about prayer, exploring the Bible and about living out your faith. So we will see you next Saturday for a new video. Bye!